I do want to say that there's very few things in this class that I'll ask you to memorize. Equations, I give you the basic equations on the exam. If you like special case equations, you have to remember them, but I give you all the basic equations on the exam. But there is one thing that from today on, from this lecture on, I will expect you to know. And I will, I will, I will not uh, theoretically tell you what they are. I will, won't tell you on a homework or a test what they are. I will expect you to know. Um, and that's the prefixes. The prefixes being how we you know, use um, scientific notation to talk about things that are bigger or, or smaller than um, you know, 1 or 10, the natural numbers. Natural numbers are numbers that are close to 1, natural units or natural amounts, you know, 1, 2, or 3. It's easy for you and me to know how many people are 3 people. 3 people. You can picture that in your head. You have a good feel for it. How many people are a million people? Now it's a hard, you have a hard time picturing that. Can I fit a million people in Martin? Can I fit a million people on the Randolph College campus? What if I lined up a million people? How long would it, you know, that's really hard to get your head around. Natural numbers are one, two, three, sort of 10. Um, and then the prefixes are what we put in front of, um, in front of our, our units in order to, if we, if we need to scale up or scale down. So these are prefixes you need to know. It's from 10 to the 12th to 10 to the minus 12th. And I'm not asking you to know all the ones in between the deca and whatever, 10 to the minus 1, 10 to the one, uh, whatever they are. Um, these are the ones that you need to know. Tera, capital T, 10 to the 12th. Terabytes is often what we talk about it with memory on a computer. Giga, capital G, 10 to the 9th. I don't know, giga, you, gigabytes on a computer, but um, I don't know when, when else we use that commonly. Mega, um, capital M, 10 to the 6th, it's a million. 10 to the 9th is a billion. Kilo, little k, 10 to the 3rd. Kilometer, kilogram, etc. 10 to the 3rd. Milli, little m, 10 to the minus 3. Micro, Greek letter mu, 10 to the minus 6. And just as an aside, we could talk about a micrometer, which is 10 to the minus 6 meters, which is about the size of a human hair. But that is also such a common measure that it's also given the name micron. The micron is the same as the micrometer, 10 to the minus 6. Nano, yeah, we talk about nanoparticles, but when we're talking about size, it's 10 to the minus 9, 1 billionth. Pico, little p, nano is little n. Pico, little p, 10 to the minus 12. Okay. Okay. So, what if I have 10 to the 12th phones? I mean, like, you know, 10 to the 12th, um, oops, not phones, sorry. All right, I screwed up that joke, but let's say I have 10 to the 12th microphones, right? Microphones, like the things you're talking to. 10 to the 12th microphones, what is that equal to? It's a joke, yes. A micro um, is also 10 to, the, 10 to the minus 6, so that is 10 to the 6th phones. Yeah. Um, but it's also a megaphone. Haha. Uh -huh. Okay. I'll let you figure this one out on your own. What if you have... 10 to the 21 piccolos. Again, as a, um, this is meant to be a pun, right? So a piccolo isn't really 10 to the minus 12 lows, but uh, if you think of it as 10 to the minus 12 lows, um, ask what a piccolo, what a, a low is nothing, right? But anyway, it's a pun. Figure it out. 10 to the 21 piccolos equals uh, one what? equals one what? Equals one what? Okay, think on that. The last topic in this chapter is order of magnitude. Order of magnitude. Oom. Sizes of things. One of the skills that we have to have as a scientist and as a physicist is understanding how big things are, how big things should be. What I mean by this is, for example, if we are trying to calculate how fast a car needs to go to get from point A to point B in a certain amount of time, and we end up calculating that the velocity or the speed of the car is three times 10 to the sixth meters per second, we need to understand that that is an unreasonable speed for a car. Sizes of things, order of magnitude, right? What are reasonable speeds for a car? Right, so if we calculate something, we say, oh, it's gotta go three million meters per second. 
that's not reasonable. Um, cars can't go that fast. Planes can't go that fast. Rocket ships can't go that fast yet. Three million meters per second? No. Mm -mm. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so, so, so if we, if we calculate that, either the problem we're trying to do is impossible to do, or the, the thing we're trying to accomplish is impossible to accomplish, or we more likely perhaps made a mistake in the calculation. So that's one of, those are the two reasons you need to know order of magnitude, is to know one, I either made a mistake in my calculation, or two, to determine that the, what I'm trying to accomplish is impossible. For example, um, a, I mean, uh, uh, a car, a reasonable speed for a car may be somewhere between zero and 50 meters per second, right? Somewhere between zero and 50 meters per second is reasonable. Even 50 meters per second is only reasonable under some circumstances because 50 meters per second is how many miles an hour? Remember, it's about a factor of two. It's about 100 miles per hour. So it's really important for us to be able to understand the sizes of things, reasonable sizes of things, order of magnitude, and estimation. We need to be able to estimate things. By estimation, what do I mean? I may be trying to figure something out, and I don't need an exact answer, but maybe I want to know how long is it going to, do I have enough time to walk to Kroger, buy some groceries, and walk back? Right? So we, we just want to do an estimation. You don't need to know exactly how long, but we need to be able to estimate it. And so in order to estimate how long it takes to walk to Kroger, this is again, it's still order of magnitude and size of things, but estimation is part of that. How long does it take to walk to Kroger, shop, and get back? In other words, do I have time before my class to go and buy lunch and get back? Well, so in estimation, we, we just want to do an order of magnitude estimation. Order of magnitude estimation. Um, you, can do, you can do as accurate an estimation as you want, but order of magnitude just means to a factor of 10. So, for example, is it, is it one mile to Kroger? Is it 10 miles to Kroger? Is it a tenth of a mile to Kroger? Or is it more or less, right? That's a factor of 10. It is approximately a mile to Kroger. It's two, but to order of magnitude, it's one mile to Kroger. How fast do I walk, right? How fast do I walk? Do I walk one mile, whoops, one mile per hour? Do I walk 10 miles per hour? Do I walk 100 miles per hour? How fast can I walk, right? Or a tenth of a mile an hour? Well, order of magnitude, 10 miles an hour is actually a fast run. 100 miles an hour is a fast car. Um, how do you know? You gotta just get a feel for things. I, I'm not. They, I'm not telling you there's a way of knowing, but you, you, you. Let me think about that for a second. If you don't know the answer to a question, how fast does a person work, walk? You have the skills to be able to estimate how fast a person walks. So I may. You may not know that a person walks couple miles an hour, two, three miles an hour, one mile an hour is an order of magnitude estimation to the best factor of 10. But if you don't know that, you need to think, pick up on real, real world problems and think about, oh, that time that I walked 10 miles, how long did it take me? Or, you know, that time, it took me hours, it didn't take me minutes. Um, and you got, you can figure out from real world experiences, what these values are. You can always, no matter how obscure a question I ask, you should be able to relate it to a real world experience that allows you to get the answer to within an order of magnitude, to within a factor of 10. So let's say we walk at one mile an hour. So how long does it take me to get to Kroger and back? If it's one mile to Kroger and I walk at one mile an hour, it takes me an hour to get there. It takes me an hour to get back, two hours. How long does it take me to shop? 10 minutes. So, you know, so order of magnitude it's two hours and 10 minutes. Ah, careful. It's not two hours and 10 minutes. Two hours and 10 minutes is the estimation that I come up with, but each of the things that went into that estimation were order of magnitude estimations, so they may be off by a factor of two or three. And that's okay, because two or three is, it, all we want to do is be within a factor of 10. So in the end, our order of magnitude estimation, we've got to round this to our closest factor of 10, which is how long will it take? One hour, 10 hours, 100 hours, or a tenth of an hour, it's one hour. 
So our order of magnitude estimation is one hour. Two hours, ten minutes rounds to closely to the to the closest order uh, factor of ten to one hour. So it's approximately an hour to get to Kroger shop and back, and that is actually probably pretty accurate. I do want to bring this lecture to a close pretty quickly, so we might do a couple of order of magnitude estimations in class before we move on to kinematics, one-dimensional kinematics, but we will be starting one-dimensional kinematics on Friday. Uh, so this is the, the unit conversion and order of magnitude estimation. So most of what we're going to do, we'll do a couple of, of, of examples in class on Friday, and then we'll move on to one-dimensional motion. Uh, before I finish, though, let me uh, say one thing. In order to do order of magnitude estimations, we need to go back to our base units. Kilogram, meter, second. Oops, I did those out of order, but that's okay. How big is a kilogram? How big is a meter? How big is a second? You want to have a good sense of that in order to have a sense of other things, right? A kilogram is approximately kilogram is approximately the mass of a bottle of water, for example. Uh, it's you know your 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 textbook weighs a couple of kilograms. A meter is approximately your height. It's really about half your height, maybe a little more. A second is the tick of a clock. Tick, tick, tick right, or the time it takes to say one Mississippi, right, you need to have the sense of those things. Once you have a sense of those things, you can have a sense of any other measure, how big any other measure is. But you do need to have a sense of how big those are. Let me leave you with a riddle. What five-letter word becomes shorter when you add two letters to it? And call it a day. <laughs>